Hello students, this is part 2 of the lesson Water. In this activity, we are asked to collect the information about a tank, pond, open well or reservoir which is near your locality by visiting with an elder or a teacher. Okay, so then you can fill up the details of the place that you visit in the space they have given here. I will leave this activity to you because it needs to be done based on your locality. Let's move on to the next question. List the uses of water. So if you think about where we use water at our homes, you can come up with some places where water is used. So we use water for drinking. We use it for cooking. We also use it for washing clothes. We use it for bathing ourselves, etc. So you can think of other uses of water at your home and you can also add them to this list. Next, when we think about the uses of water at your school, we can think about places like firstly, we can use water for drinking even in our school. Next. If you have a garden in your school, then water can be used for plants in the garden. Next, water is used for washing our hands. In the washrooms and in the hand sinks of your school. So if you can think of other places where we use water in your schools, you can add them to this list as well. In this section, they inform us that water can also be used for transportation. So if you have seen the globe and if you remember, major portion of the globe is covered with water. So this water can be used for traveling shorter and long distances. So yachts and boats are used for traveling shorter distances and for going fishing and catching fish. So ships are used for traveling longer distances. Journeys on water can also be made for transporting cargo. In the next section, we will be learning about the different properties of water. So in the activity, they want us to collect flowing rainwater in a glass bottle. And they also want us to collect rainwater directly into the bottle. When you look at the two bottles, we might be able to observe some differences in their color. So if you can imagine water that is flowing on the ground, you might be able to see that it will be mixed with the ground particles that is with mud. So that water might be darker in color. It might contain other impurities such as mud particles, maybe small leaves, etc. However, when you look at the water that you have collected directly from the rain, it will be clear. So it will not contain any mud particles and any other impurities that you can see. Now, as the next part of the exercise, they want us to take two glasses of water and they want us to add a spoon of sugar to one and a spoon of salt to the other. Stir them and taste both. Write what you have understood. So, the glass to which we have added a spoon of sugar will be sweet. That is correct. And the glass to which, which we have added a spoon of salt would be salt. So we can understand that water changes its taste based on what we are adding to it. You may also remember that pure water does not have any sweet or salty taste. So we will learn more about these properties in the next section. So pure water is colorless. Odorless. Odorless means it does not have any smell. Okay. And tasteless. 
so pure water does not have any color does not have any smell and does not have any taste so how does water sometimes give out different tastes that is because some salts and minerals are dissolved in water and these are responsible for the taste in the next activity we will be marking right or wrong in front of the statements we also need to correct the wrong statements and right the first activity is lift an empty tumbler and a tumbler of the same size filled with water when you do this activity you might be able to see that the tumbler that is filled with water is heavier and is more difficult to lift you can also see the same property when you are taking a water bottle to your school that is filled with water it is heavy it might be difficult for you to carry the bottle but when you are coming back home if you have finished the water in the bottle then it is much lighter and much easier to carry so this property shows us that water has weight so the statement that is given here is right next the activity says pour a cup of water on the stairs when we pour water from a high level we can see that it flows down to a lower level we can also see the same property in waterfalls also so water from a higher level would flow down to lower level so the statement here says water does not flow from higher level to lower level so this statement is wrong the corrected statement is water flows from higher to lower levels the next statement says boil water in a small vessel you might have noticed that whenever we boil water if we keep it there for too long the amount of water will get reduced you may also be able to see some steam particles that are escaping from the water surface so water evaporate when it boils so this statement is right now let us look at the fourth activity it says put some specific quantity of water in a glass tumbler a glass bottle or a glass vessel when you do this you can observe that water takes the shape of whatever container you are putting it in if you are going to put it in a cup it will take the shape of the cup if you put it into the bottle it will become the shape of your bottle so the statement is saying water does not take the shape of the container so the statement is wrong the correct statement is water takes the shape of the container you have learned some physical characteristics of water so we have learned that water has weight water flows from a higher level to a lower level water evaporates when it boils and water takes the shape of the container you will learn more about water in the lesson nature of matter now let us learn the biological importance of water organisms have an enormous quantity of water in their body enormous quantity means a very big and large quantity of water plants and animals have 70% of water in their bodies origin of very early life took place in water so the first living organisms to ever be originated on the planet earth was inside water water is essential for biological activities of plants and animals because water is essential for us we feel thirsty when our body needs water and water is required for the growth of plants 
you might have seen that plants when there is no rain and when there is no water will become dry but when you water the plants they will become more green so this is because water is required for the growth of plants green plants need water for the production of their food the next activity is think what happens if the required quantity of water is not supplied to plants we already thought about this and we know that when plants do not get the amount of water they need their growth will be damaged when we look at this picture we can see that the plant that is on the left is droopy and looks very dry so its leaves are falling down it does not look healthy the plant on the right this one has very green leaves the leaves are all standing up and it looks very green so the plant on the left might not have gotten the amount of water that it needs the plant on the right is a good watered plant which is getting the required quantity of water our elders treated this precious water as an integral part of their life they reserved a prominent place for water in their family rituals have you observed this at your home or in your neighborhood the first question is which are the practices of worshiping water that you have seen in your home or in your neighborhood when are they celebrated right here for this question you can think about such practices that you have seen around you or you can take this example tala kaveri is the birthplace of river kaveri the temple in tala kaveri is dedicated to goddess kaveramma in mid october devotees and worshipers gather here and pray to goddess kaveramma The next question is how do water sources get polluted water is physically polluted by mud garbage paper food residuals etc so when we throw these three things into water sources the water sources gets physically polluted another way in which water gets polluted is when industries dispose their waste products into water sources water gets mixed with industrial chemicals fertilizers and insecticides which make the water dangerous for consumption so when industries dispose their waste water into other water sources the waste water might have industrial chemicals and other dangerous substances like fertilizers and insecticides so when these get mixed with water sources it becomes unusable for consumption the next question is how do water sources get polluted water is physically polluted by mud garbage paper food residuals etc so when we throw these three things into water sources the water sources gets physically polluted another way in which water gets polluted is when industries dispose their waste products into water sources water gets mixed with industrial chemicals fertilizers and insecticides which make the water dangerous for consumption so when industries dispose their waste water into other water sources the waste water might have industrial chemicals and other dangerous substances like fertilizers and insecticides so when these get mixed with water sources it becomes unusable for consumption in the previous section we learned about the disease cholera that is caused by contaminated water another disease that is caused is malaria mosquitoes they breed in stagnant water so stagnant water is when there is no flow of water whenever there is very heavy rains you can see water that is collected on the roads so if you look closely 
you might be able to observe small mosquitoes that are present nearby the stagnant water. So mosquitoes will reproduce or breed in the stagnant water and they spread the malaria disease. So the spread of malaria disease is caused by a parasite called as plasmodium. It is present in the body of the female mosquito called as anaphylis. This parasite enters the human blood when a mosquito bites and this leads to symptoms of fever, shivering, vomiting and headache. So this does not mean that whenever we are bitten by mosquitoes, we will get malaria. The symptoms of malaria are symptoms like fever, uh, shivering, vomiting and headache. So when we get these symptoms, doctors will tell us if or not we have malaria. When we do get malaria, proper treatment will help us get cured. However, if proper treatment is not given, it may even cause death. This is one of the reasons why we need to make sure all the water sources around our houses are very clean. So we should not drink contaminated water and health can be maintained by drinking potable water. Potable water is water that is fit for human consumption. Prepare and exhibit a chart in your class by discussing with your friends about what you will do to get pure and potable water. Now, it is time for a quiz. The question is, which of these is not a cause for water pollution? So, which of these is not a cause for water pollution? Options are industrial waste, chemical fertilizers, rainwater harvesting and insecticides. So, the correct answer is rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting does not cause water pollution. If you see over here, rainwater harvesting is when we collect rainwater and then store it and use it for our daily purposes. So you can see in this image that rainwater is being stored on the roof and then being transferred to the tank for our daily use. The other options that were given, which included industrial waste, chemical fertilizers and insecticides are causes for water pollution. Okay students, that is the end of part 2 of water and that concludes the chapter water.